today in yet another video about a new radio recently released and then updated shortly thereafter, I will be showing you the new, new, updated BTEC GMRS V2. This is V2 of the V2 GMRS radio. And I'm going to be sharing a few things that the boys at BTEC and girls too, probably, I don't know, some things that they schooled me on, proving that even a YouTube superstar can make mistakes. But first, allow me to mention something that I have not mentioned and have not talked about in quite a long time, and that is comments that people leave on my videos. Longtime viewers of this channel know that the best of the dickhead comments, the cream of the crop of the assholery comments, get pinned to the top of the comments list so that everyone can enjoy them and laugh at them. If you're not a longtime viewer, here's what happens. Some jackwad leaves a stupid comment, I pin it to the top so everyone can see it and laugh at it. But recently there has been so much competition amongst the idiots that I can only pin the top, the most dumbest of comments. All the others simply get deleted. But effective immediately for your entertainment, the best of the pinned comments and those comments that never see the light of day on my YouTube channel, the comments that I delete, I now also share on my Twitter. Twitter. You heard that right. Some of the really bad, the really hateful, the really stupid comments that will never be seen on my channel because I delete them, I will now share on my Twitter. So if you do the Twitters, find me over there so that you can enjoy the best of the worst comments so you never miss what the haters have to say. This is the new updated GMRS V2 by BTEC. This is version 2 of the V2, as it were. Now, just to be clear, this is not going to be a full review of the BTEC GMRS V2 because I already did a full review when the radio was first released. Think of this video as an addendum to the full review video so that I can show you the corrections that BTEC has done since they first released the radio and so that I can clarify a couple of things that I talked about in that first video. And just to be clear, this new GMRS V2 version 2 of the V2 was sent to me from BTEC so that I could show the world that the issues I pointed out in my previous video have actually indeed been resolved. And to be even more clear, in that first video I said, or perhaps I inferred, that the GMRS V2 was built by Baofeng. And the boys and girls at BTEC have informed me that this is not an accurate statement. And they went on to clarify that the BTEC GMRS V2 was not built by Baofeng, as I had previously mentioned, and it is also not just a ham radio with a different sticker on the front and different firmware inside, like so many other low-cost GMRS radios. BTEC, which, by the way, is based in South Dakota right here in these United States, they have pointed out to me and clarified that the GMRS V2 was designed from the ground up as a GMRS radio, and it is not built by Baofeng, as I stated in my previous review of the GMRS V2. And as long as we're pointing out things that I got wrong, they also schooled me about the rules surrounding removable antennas on GMRS handheld radios, because I talked about that in my video about the BTEC GMRS Pro radio, which I did just a few weeks ago. On that video and several other videos, I have stated that handheld GMRS radios are allowed to have removable antennas unless that radio also transmits data. But as BTEC has pointed out to me, this is not entirely correct. BTEC has taught me that in order to have a removable antenna on a GMRS handheld radio, the radio must first pass RF exposure testing. If there is too much RF exposure to the end user, then the antenna may not be removable. This means that only the better quality GMRS handheld radios can get certified by the FCCs to have removable antennas. And GMRS radios that cannot pass these RF exposure tests are relegated to having non-removable antennas. Not to be confused with FRS radios, which also have non-removable antennas, that's a whole nother thing. Okay, now that I have admitted my failings and mistakes, 
let's go over what I complained about most loudly about the GMRS V2 radio when it was first released. On the original GMRS V2 radio, which was just released a few months ago, out of the box, channels one through seven were set at narrow band, even though, according to the FCCs, those channels can and should be set at wide band. So as you can see, channels eight through 14, known as the intersexual channels, are set to narrow band, as you can see by the little N up there at the top, indicating narrow band. This is required by the FCC for channels eight through 14, those intersexual channels. But as you can also see now, channels seven through one, or if you're looking the other direction, channels one through seven are not set at narrow band out of the box, as you can see by no little N or narrow band indicator on the screen, as well as channels 15 through 22, which are also set at wide band out of the box. So that issue has been resolved. The other big issue with the original release of the GMRS V2 radio only a few months ago was that all of the channel frequencies were wrong. This was kind of a big deal. On the original V2 radio out of the box, every channel was set at the frequency of 467.5625, which is GMRS channel eight. But as you can see on the new updated GMRS V2, all of the channels are now correctly set to their respective frequency. So yes, BTEC has successfully addressed both of these issues. So should you buy the new updated GMRS V2 radio, even when this radio was first released with those issues, which weren't that difficult to fix, even then with those issues, this was a good low cost GMRS radio. And now that BTEC has fixed these issues, it's even better. So yes, if you're looking for a good low-cost GMRS radio, yes, you should buy it. Affiliate link below.